In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. As we prepare ourselves to enter into the sacred mysteries, let us pause to call to mind our sins. Kindle the faith of the people you have made your own. Increase, we pray, the grace you have bestowed, that all may grasp and rightly understand in what font they have been washed, by whose spirit they have been reborn, by whose blood they have been redeemed. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from Acts. Peter said to the people, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, the God of our fathers has glorified his servant Jesus, whom you handed over and denied in Pilate's presence when he had decided to release him. You denied the holy and righteous one and asked that a murderer be released to you. The author of life you put to death, but God raised him from the dead. Of this we are witnesses. Now I know, brothers, that you acted out of ignorance, just as your leaders did. But God has thus brought to fulfillment what he had announced beforehand through the mouth of all the prophets that his Christ would suffer. Repent, therefore, and be converted that your sins may be wiped away.
reading from the book of John. My children, I am writing this to you so that you may not commit sin. But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous one. He is expiation for our sins, and not for our sins only, but for those of the whole world. The way we may be sure that we know him is to keep his commandments. Those who say, I know him, but do not keep his commandments are liars, and the truth is not in them. But whoever keeps his word, the love of God is truly perfected in him. Gospel according to Luke. The two disciples recounted what had taken place on the way and how Jesus was made known to them in the breaking of the bread. While they were still speaking about this, he stood in their midst and said to them, Peace be with you. But they were startled and terrified and thought they were seeing a ghost. Then he said to them, Why are you troubled? And why do questions arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet that it is I myself. Touch me and see, because a ghost does not have flesh and bones, as you can see, I have. And as he said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. While they were still incredulous for joy and were amazed, he asked them, Have you anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of baked fish. He took it and ate it in front of them. He said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you that everything written about me in the law of Moses and in the prophets and Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures. And he said to them, Thus it is written that the Christ would suffer and rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance for the forgiveness of sins would be preached in his name to all the nations beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. The Gospel of the Lord. He had to put them at ease. He had to reassure them. He had to let them know that everything was going to be okay. But he didn't take from them any of their dignity, their humanity, their ability to continue to be true witnesses, true believers. He didn't create some sort of miracle that all of a sudden made it very easy for them. No, what he left them with were courage and peace. Courage. There's a favorite wall plaque that I've seen so many times that always makes me smile whenever I pass by 
says, courage is fear that has said its prayers. And it's a favorite expression because in all honesty, there are still fears that come, things that make me nervous, things that worry me. And I've never found the perfect solution to let go of it all. There's no magic wand you can wave. There's nothing the doctor can prescribe. There's not even good comfort food that takes all your fears away. But you can take your fears and you can bring them to the Lord in prayer. And you can say to the Lord, dear Lord, I am afraid. I am worried. I am filled with anxiety. And I need in this moment to share this with you. I need you here with me. I know you can't just simply take it away. I know it's part of my condition of being a human being. But what I also know, Lord, is that it's part of my witness in the world, that I go back into the world not as fearful, not as anxious, not as uncertain, but I go back and I bring it with me and I live my life in such a way that others know by my witness and hear in my words that I've made peace with it. I've claimed it, taken it for my own, and I'm going to learn to live with it and let it be part of me, but not consume me or define me. I'm going to be courageous, but I'm also going to be peaceful. Because Lord, you've shown through the numerous accounts, the resurrection accounts, that you fulfill your promises. You don't go back on your word. And I have to trust in that. I have to trust that you brought me this far in my life as you brought everyone, not to drop them on their heads, not to leave them to figure it out on their own, not to wander aimlessly. You've brought us this far that we might be courageous and that we might contribute to the peace of the world. In that way, the things that do prompt worry and fear and anxiety are no longer all consuming. There's not always a lot I can do to make it different, but I can lessen the impact it has on me when I bring it home to the Lord in prayer, in that wonderful spot where we get to be together and we get to put all things out there as they are. Because when we take that opportunity, when we're courageous enough to name our fears for what they are, and then to allow the Lord to help us bear the burden, we find true peace. May that continue, continue for you in all ways of your life. Be a true witness, but be one who is human, who acknowledges what you can and cannot do, and know the wisdom that comes from taking what it is that you don't believe you can do and bringing it before the Lord and allowing him to share his peace. Let us profess the faith that unites us. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, 
light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. With trust in God's infinite mercy, let us bring our petitions before him. For missionaries, may the Lord bless them with generosity and boldness in sharing the love of God. Let us pray to the Lord. For the heads of government throughout the world, may God's gracious mercy be upon them and those they serve. Let us pray to the Lord. For all who are troubled in spirit, May they receive hope and healing through the grace of God and the efforts of their caregivers. Let us pray to the Lord. For this community of faith, may the Lord bless our relationships and grant us purity of heart and mind. Let us pray to the Lord. those who have died in the light of faith. May they share in the resurrection of Jesus. Let us pray to the Lord. For all special petitions brought before the altar. Let us pray to the Lord. Let us pray. Merciful Father, we who believe in you without seeing, give you thanks for your gracious mercy. Hear the prayers we offer today through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever.
Friends, I guess have been prepared. Pray that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Father Almighty. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at our hands to the praise and glory of his name for our good, the good of all his holy church. O Lord, accept we ask the prayers of your people with the sacrificial offerings that what has begun in the Paschal Mysteries may, by the working of your power, bring us to the healing of eternity through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time above all to laud you yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying he has destroyed our death. By rising, restored our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into the Passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to the disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, gave it to the disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Then we eat this bread and drink this cup. celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Timothy, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, Saints Malachi and Genesius, Cecilia and Vitus, the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor are yours forever and ever.
longing for the coming of God's kingdom, we pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you in my soul, since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally. Come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. O God, look upon your church with unfailing love and favor, so that renewed by the paschal mysteries, she may come to the glory of the resurrection, 
through Christ our Lord. For myself, for Monsignor Aquino, for Father Trans, and for all who serve at St. Malachy's, for all who have worshiped with us over this year, as we gather together now in the joy of the Easter season, may God's abundant blessings be with you and those whom you love. We continue to remember in our hearts those whom we have lost, praying for God's mercy. We pray for those who suffer at this time, that they may know God's strength. But we pray for all of you, that united with us in prayer, you may know God's peace and the joy of the resurrection in the world that you go into. The Lord be with you. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit descend upon you and remain with you and your loved ones forever and ever. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God.